Which platform fighter dies next? Let's start with the most obvious one, which is Super Smash Bros. Melee. The community just refuses to let this game go. It's been over 20 years and people are still playing it. They keep updating it by giving it online capabilities, widescreen capabilities. It's just a really fun, fast action paced video game that just Nintendo hates. Nintendo just absolutely hates the idea that we love Melee so much. And that's why I think that even after 80 years from now, even after I'm dead, people are still gonna be playing this game in their little retirement homes. That's why I think that Super Smash Bros. Melee is just never dying. All right, so next we have to talk about multiverses. Now, multiverses was actually one of the most hyped video games that are out there because you had Wonder Woman versus Steven Universe, you had Batman versus Shaggy, you know, you had this epic crossover of Warner Bros. characters, but eventually the game kind of just died because no one's really playing it anymore. And the reason for that is because, well, there was a couple of balancing issues, too many infinite combos, an esports scene that was promised and then kind of just left in the dust and people forgot about, and the worst part is that the game is currently unavailable for download. The developers actually shut down the game because they said, oh, it's an open beta. We'll just take it from you now to fix it and then re-release it Overwatch 2 style. I'm pretty sure that that re-release is just gonna flop harder than the actual release. So Multiverses is basically already dead by these standards. All right, so next let's talk about Divine Knockout. Now Divine Knockout is at a heavy risk of dying because the developers just abandoned the game four months after release and just went radio silent. I already talked about this in my video, but what ended up happening is that High res just went through a massive restructure and their 3D smash like game where you get to play as different gods from different religions just kind of got left in the dust. It's currently under maintenance mode and well even though it had an initial $25 price of purchase on top of battle passes on top of cosmetics and it was just riddled with microtransactions in the very least it's free to play now and you can kind of check it out and well just give it a shot before it's just completely shut down which I think it'll happen within the next few months. All right, we got to talk about Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl because this game had so much potential. Just like every other game in this video that just unexpectedly died for no reason, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl was on track to be one of the most awesome games that are out there. But unfortunately, it just happened to die the very second that Multiverses came out. And that's because Multiverses had a lot of things that Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl just didn't have, including voice acting, which apparently for the casual player base, voice acting is a very core component for like the gameplay experience because you get to hear and remember and, you know, familiarize yourself with the character, but when you're playing Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, it's like you're playing with mimes. But the idea of having to play as SpongeBob versus Reptar, or Nigel Thornberry versus Korra from The Legend of Korra, that just seemed like an amazing concept for a video game, but unfortunately, the high price tag that the game had on release, it's not free to play still. And well, the fact that Multiverses was free to play on release kind, kind of just spelled the doom for Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, unfortunately. So even though it's not technically dead yet, it still has like maybe five people playing it total. It's I would call it at a risk of dying. Before Ludosity, the people that make Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl started working on that. They were had a game called Slap City, and Slap City was basically a very stupid looking game, but not in a bad way. Just, you know, stupid as in fun. Stupid as like the gameplay was obviously lo funny looking. The characters looked like they were Bomberman characters, to be honest. And well, you had names like Business Casual Man, Goddess of Explosion, Ultra Fish Bujin 3000. You can tell that the game was just not meant to be taken seriously, but still you had a couple of tournaments hosted here and there. And it was just overall a really funny game to look at. But unfortunately, like I mentioned, the people that were working on it just abandoned it to work on Nick All-Stars Brawl. So let's just consider this game already dead because when we look at the Steam chart, as of two hours ago, zero people playing it. And on a 24 hour peak, it just had 14 players playing it. So we can consider this game just as good as dead. Now on the other spectrum of games that are dying, we have the games that are definitely not dying. And we're talking about Brawlhalla in this one. And to be honest guys, I don't understand why the game's not dying. Listen, I played Super Smash Brothers and I played Platform Fighters growing up all my life. And well, the gameplay in Brawlhalla just, I don't really like it. It's too floaty. It doesn't speak to me as a platform fighter. So when I see that it has 18,000 players on average on a 24 hour peak on the steam charts i'm just like who, who who's really playing this man you know i get it it's fun but there's so many other games that are out there that i just consider much more fun but then again the game is very esports oriented and the developers really heavily market the game towards esports and they you know usually give out a lot of cash prizes for it so i guess it kind of makes sense that the developers really want the game to succeed and well i'm not gonna judge it because it's not my kind of game but you can't argue with the fact that it's actually wildly successful it has a lot of players playing it and it's not in any trouble of dying anytime yet. All right, so now we got to talk about Flash Party, another game that I've actually played before and made a video about. This game is another example of a game that's just really fun and really awesome to play, but it's heavily paywalled, just like Divine Knockout. Actually, it's worse than Divine Knockout because this one, once you hit the paywall, you just stop having fun because you get to play with the characters that you have. The combat mechanic is actually very fun and engaging, but if you want to level up your character, if you want to get to competitive, if you want to get all the stickers to equip on your character, well, those are locked behind a loot box. And well, it's just microtransaction behind microtransaction 
transaction behind, behind microtransaction. There's way too much on this game that's just in your face trying to sell you something, and that's like the biggest turnoff of the game, which is a real shame because the game is actually really fun to play, but the fact that you just have to spend money in order to enjoy the game in the first place, it's just not a very good selling point. And I can assure you that once the game stops making what little money it's making, the developers are just gonna kill it on the spot, and that's why I think it's at a very high risk of dying at the moment. And when you look at the Steam charts, the game's averaging 120 players per day, and well, that's not really anything impressive to write home about. All right, so now we gotta talk about the most controversial opinion I have in this tier list, which is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I don't think that Smash Ultimate is completely unkillable just like Melee, because Melee is a timeless classic. That thing will live on forever. But Ultimate is only popular because it's the shiny new thing, right? It's the one that everyone's playing because it's the latest one. And I can assure you that once Nintendo releases Switch 2, or like the next generation console, alongside with the new Smash game, Ultimate's just going in the dumpster. Despite the fact that it has every single character in existence, it's just gonna follow the same tragedy like Super Smash Bros. 4, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, not Melee, that one's living forever, but Super Smash Bros. 64. And even though Sakurai has said that he doesn't want to make any more Smash games and that Smash Ultimate is the last Smash game that's gonna be released, that's the same thing they said about Smash 4, and that's the same thing they said about Brawl. But for now, I think that Smash Ultimate is not really dying anytime soon, but it's not unkillable. And that's why I'm putting it in the No Trouble tier list. Have you guys ever heard of Brawlout? This game where you play as lizard people and like animals in, in wrestling costumes? Yeah, I've never heard about it either. That's how dead the game already is. The game released and it's available on PlayStation. It has a couple of like cameos, like that one wrestling guy from Guacamelee, and it has ukulele, but every other character that's inside is just completely forgettable. Like who, who wants to play as just like an animal in a wrestling costume? You know, there's nothing special about it. And the gameplay itself just feels way too similar to Smash Brothers to make it memorable by any means. And when you don't have memorable characters or memorable gameplay itself, you can tell why when you look at the Steam charts, the game has literally zero players playing it. This game is just, it's dead. It's just way too dead. So we'll just leave that in the already dead tier for now. In fact, if there's a deader than dead tier, we'll just put that one there. Now, speaking of dead games, let's talk about Icon's Combat Arena. Now, this is a game heavily inspired by Super Smash Bros. Melee. It's fast-paced, it's combo-heavy, and the characters are basically Melee clones because you have a Fox-like character and you have a Marth-like character, and that's because the game was made by the developers of Project M, a Smash Bros. Brawl mod that was supposed to make Brawl play more like Melee. And unfortunately, that's kind of what ended up killing the game, I think, because when you make a game that's way too similar to the mecha of platform fighters, the absolute best game that's ever been made, well, why play Icon's when you have Melee instead? Why play the lesser then when you have the best game that's ever been made? I'm very biased in this tier list. And unfortunately, that spelled the doom to Icons because the game eventually shut down and they released an Icons Legacy Edition. Well, just to keep the game alive, but you know, in retrospect, the game's already dead. Because part of the developers went to go work on the spiritual successor, Rushdown Revolt, and it's basically the same story all over again. A game that's very high action, high octane paced, but it just fails when compared to Melee. And you can kind of tell that they tried updating the aesthetics of the game to make it more operate like Smash Ultimate, and while still being a fast paced combo oriented game. But at the end of the day, when you try making a game that's way too similar to Smash Bros or it's just like too heavily inspired from Smash Bros, the game eventually dies because people just prefer to play the better version. They prefer to play Smash Bros and that's why I think like for example Divine Knockout was such a really good game because it was just so different from any other Smash game that's been released. You know that one had its flavor but Rushdown Revolt, Icons Combat Arena, those are just copy paste which is unfortunate and that's why they're both at the already dead spot on the tier list. Oh, by the way, Rushdown Revolt forgot to mention, the game is completely free to play. That's awesome. But if you actually want to play online, you gotta pay $25 to get online access in Rushdown Revolt. <laughs> so, who's paying for that, man? And last but not least, let's talk about Rivals of Either. This is the one game that was heavily inspired from Smash Bros, but it actually ended up succeeding because they went in a completely different direction by removing ledges and removing grabs. They gave the game its own flavor and, well, its own aesthetics as well because the pixelated characters just give it, you know, a very charming look. And it has the Steam Workshop really working for it because you can make custom characters and add them into the game, which adds a lot more replayability. This is the one game out of this entire list, besides, you know, Brawlhalla, that's actually doing really well in numbers because if you look at Rivals of Either, it has a little bit over 800 players on peak, but that's mainly because people are looking forward to Rivals of Either 2, which was announced to be released in 2024, so there's probably not that many people playing this one because they're kind of just sitting on the sidelines, kind of just waiting for Rivals 2 to come out. So Rivals of Either 1, even though it's very fun, it's very beautiful looking, and it has a bunch of like customizations and characters, it's not necessarily a bad game, but it is at risk of dying because Rivals of Either 2 is going to come out and just kill it eventually. But yeah, this is the whole tier list and basically what I wanted to talk about today, so I'll catch you guys on the next one.